it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1172, the Iron Fence pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. You choose your card size, but an A2 card is the minimum size. Now I went a little bit larger. I started with a piece of cardstock, 9 inches by 6 inches, scored it in the center so that I have a 4.5 by 6 card. For background, I have some blue pattern paper near the top. I've cut some green panels for the bottom, and with those, I'm going to edge them first using one of our new die sets. This is the Long Nature Edges 2. One of the dies in that set will cut a stitched curvy hill with some trees attached, and I decided the one tree that was kind of close in the middle was too close to the fold, so I just trimmed that one off. Changing the color of the trees is pretty easy with a brown marker or I could use brown ink or if my paper were too dark and I couldn't just change the color of the trees with a marker, I could always cut them again out of like a brown cardstock and glue over the top. The foliage dies that come in the Long Nature Edges too are actually stamping dies. So if you put ink on those dies before die cutting, then as you die cut it, it will both cut and stamp. Now the stamping layer is on the die, but it is optional as to whether or not you ink it. If you don't ink it, then you'll still get the swirl pattern, but it will just be pressed into the piece. So it will be more like a debossed swirl pattern instead of an inked swirl pattern. I do recommend that you clean your stamping dies after using them with ink. And for that, you don't need any harsh chemicals, just some water and a rag. Now I just need to glue my foliage pieces behind my trees. And of course you do have the option just to leave the foliage pieces off if you wanted, say, a winter card with bare trees. You also have the option to just chop off all of the trees and then you just have a cool stitched hill. Then I just grabbed some cardstock out of my scrap bin in the various colors that are in the floral paper and used the little heart die that comes in that Long Nature Edges too to add hearts to the trees. The Iron Fence pop-up is a die that I designed when I was a licensed artist for another company, and we've had lots of requests to bring it back. Usually when I go back to a die to re-release it, I look for things that I could change or improve, but I just loved this die the way it was. The only thing I changed is I added some wings to the birds. The nice thing about the Iron Fence pop-up is that the fence is designed so that it can look great as a flat fence or it can be made into a pop-up. And for my card today, I'm using silver mirror card for both the fence and the sliding arm. And then for the sleeve that goes around the arm, I usually just pick whatever color of the background it's going to be placed against. So in this case, the floral paper. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. And today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. If you look closely at the sleeve die, you'll see that there are two score lines very close together for the sides sort of to make it a sleeve that has some thickness in the sides. But the important part is just that when you put that together and put it on the arm, that it is loose. So the slider arm is the one that I've cut out of the silver card stock. It has a score line on one end. And so your first step is just to find that score line and fold towards yourself on that one. And since I plan to have my fence pop up on the right side of the card, I would want that score line on the left. Then I need the fence itself. Now this is optional, but what I like to do with the arm is also cut it out of the background color that's going to be underneath the fence when it's arched up. So I cut it out of the color of the fence and then I also cut it out of the background color. And I know that I want to extend my fence onto the other side of the card, so I went ahead and cut a second one. And then I'm going to use some stays on black ink and a coarse sponge just to sponge ink all over those silver pieces to give them some texture, reduce the shine a little bit. Here's a closer look at how those fences look with having that black ink sponged onto the silver. On the slider arm, I focused my ink just out on the end that has the fold line in it, only the area that's going to come through the fence and be visible on the front when the card is open. The rest of it I'm going to cover with that other slider arm. So for that one, I'm going to take off three quarters of an inch. So now I glue that shortened arm to the silver one, lining it up with the right edge. So on the sleeve, it's going to wrap around the slider arm and you just want to make sure that it remains very loose and easy for the arm to slide through that little sleeve. 
So I'm just going to use glue for this. I've been using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website and it is my very favorite glue. Okay, here's how this is going to work. It is the flat end of the slider arm that attaches to the fence. So in this case, this end out here. And then that'll attach to the fence and the tab end will come through that little triangle shaped hole. And I'm installing this on the right side of the card. So it is the right fence post that gets attached to the flat end of the slider arm and right in the middle with the slider arm lined up with the edge of the fence post. I'm going to use glue for this, sliding my slider arm out of the way. Then I can add my glue to that wider fence post and then slide the arm into that glue so that the end of the slider arm is right at the edge of the fence post. For placement, it needs to go just straight through the center of the fence where all of those triangle shaped holes are. So if you flip that over, you can see that that slider arm is right behind all of those triangle shaped holes. In order for the fence to arch, it needs to be folded right next to the wide fence post on both sides. So there are little score lines in it, but it's also just really easy to fold right next to the wide fence post on both sides. And I'm folding those towards the front of the fence. So you can see it's going to arch like this. Now I just have to get that tab going through that final triangle hole again so that it's going to come through to the front of the fence and it's essentially going to attach over here. That's what's going to make it arch and then opening and closing the card will make it collapse. So to get it placed in the right position, you first want to fold that tab over towards the center of the fence so that you're looking at the back of that tab. Then you add your strong adhesive to the back of that tab. Let me show that a little closer. So adhesive on the back of the tab. Then I keep everything nice and flat and I fold that left fence post over and into that exposed adhesive. And then it will attach that tab in exactly the right spot for the fence to fold down flat. And then as the card is opened, it will then arch up the fence like this. Okay, so just figuring out where this is going to go in the card, the left fence post is going to be the one that glues down and it's going to glue just to the left side of the fold. So I'm going to close that up into the flat position so that I can add my strong adhesive all over the back of that fence post. So this is the only fence post that gets any adhesive at all. It's the only one that gets glued inside the card. Okay, so now I need to flip that over and place it on the left side of the card so that I can get the edge of that fence post just right up into the fold of the card. Now I could put that anywhere along the fold vertically, but I decided just to have the bottom of the fence lined up with the bottom edge of my pattern paper. Okay, once that fence post is attached, if I bring the fence to the other side, you'll see how it is arching up. Okay, just know that the only thing that anchors that fence to the right side of the card is adhesive on the sleeve itself. So there is no adhesive on any other fence post. So I'm adding my adhesive to the sleeve and then I'm going to bring the fence over to the right side just so I can make sure that the fence post out on the right is kind of the same in line with the bottom edge of the pattern paper. Then I'm going to slide my little sleeve to the right until it's just behind the arching fence on the right side. That just seems to be the flattest spot and the easiest place for it to adhere to the card. So I'm pressing down that sleeve. And that is all there is to it. So really easy assembly on the iron fence pop-up. As the card closes, it'll be flat. As it opens, it will arch up. And the mechanism behind the fence really does kind of disappear in that it is cut out of the same color as the background. Okay, I've kind of trimmed the left side of the other fence so that it's in a position that looks good when the fence is arched up and it looks like it's just going to continue. And I'm going to glue that flat to the card and my flat fence is under the arching fence so that the arching fence can still slide over the top of it. And then I'm just going to turn that card over and cut off the rest of the fence so I can use it on the other side of the card. If I wanted to get all the way to the left side of the card, I'd have to cut and ink another fence. So I decided just to use my leftovers about three fence posts worth. And then I'm just gluing that down on the left side of the card, butted up next to the arching fence. I've die cut the two birds that come in the set and the first thing I'm going to do is use the stencil feature on the die to add the eyes. So I've die cut them out of a white cardstock and then I'm going to use a black pen for their eyes. 
There is also a stencil feature for the wings of the birds. If you would like the wings to be a little darker, you can use some ink through the die before removing the paper. And then I'm using some orange ink to change the beaks and the legs, and then a little of that same kind of bluish gray ink on their backs. The birds are just decorative. They could go anywhere on the card or nowhere on the card if you don't want to use them, but they also look particularly cool just perched on the arching fence, and then they will pop down and pop up with the fence. Another new die set in this same release is our big script Hello, and that has an optional stitch line stencil feature. So just use a pen through the die when you want to have the stitch lines. It does come with an optional shadow layer. So I've added the hello to the shadow layer and then put that on the card. Okay, finishing up the card's interior with an oval from our crosshatch ovals. And then for the flowers, you can either just chop up the flower border that's in the long nature edges too, or if you have our garden bench pop up, it comes as an individual flower in that set. And something like a flower or a heart can be a good item to sort of disguise the mechanics of that tab, but you just have to be careful that you do not cross the fold with your embellishment or else your embellishment will have to fold as well. For card fronts, I usually just repeat the elements from the inside of the card using my leftover materials. My finished card measures four and a half by six inches. It will mail easily in an A7 envelope and shouldn't require any extra postage because it folds flat. I took some inspiration for the video card from the card that's on the packaging for the iron fence pop-up and this one measures four and a half by five. And also on the packaging is this Christmas version of the iron fence. And for this one, I turned the birds into cardinals. Okay, turning the birds into cardinals. So the secret is not to cut the top of the head. So I'm just taking a Sharpie pen and kind of looking at the die side and then rough marking on the back where I need my cutting pad to stop so that I will not cut the top of the head. Okay, so now I've got my bird die on some red cardstock, just taping that down temporarily. I'm using my Easy Cuts machine and I'm going to stop the upper cutting pad at that line. And I know it looks like I'm going over the line, and I guess I am, but there's a beveled section to that cutting pad that doesn't really cut. So I'm making sure that the thick part of the cutting pad goes against my line. Okay, so now I've cut everything except the top of the head of that bird. See, I've got the beak, I just don't have the top of the head. I can still use the stencil feature to add the eye to the bird, and I'll do that before removing the die. And then now what I need to do is just take a pencil and kind of sketch in a little point at the top of the head, sort of that distinctive look of a cardinal. So that's just kind of a freehand little point like that, and then I'll just cut that out with scissors. And I like to style my cardinals with black beaks and legs, and then I just inked the edges of the wings. So it is an extra step, but it's great to have that option to be able to style those birds as cardinals. You have the option of having the fence arch up on the left side of the card instead of the right. And when you want to do that, you attach the flat end of the arm to the left post of the fence. And then from there, it's the same. You bring the little tab through that little triangle to the front of the fence. Okay, so you can see how it's going to arch up. Just like with the other assembly, I fold the tab down towards the center of the fence and I add the glue to the back of the tab. And then I keep everything flat and I fold over the wider fence post into that exposed adhesive. But you can see this time it's the right fence post instead of the left. And it's the right fence post that gets glued inside the card. So in this case, I just add my adhesive all over that wider fence post. And then I'm going to line it up this time on the right side of the card with the edge of the fence butted right up next to the fold. So you can see I'm doing exactly a mirror image of what I did on the first card. So now the fence is going to arch up on the left side of the card. And again, it's only the sleeve that gets glued down. So I just need some adhesive on the back of that sleeve. Then I arch the fence over to the other side, slide my sleeve towards the outside, until it's still under the arch of the fence, but basically as far left as I can get it where it's still hidden underneath the inside of the fence, and then I reach in there and give it a good press. I've used that same trick of adding the same pattern paper to the top of the arm and the sleeve so that it mostly disappears under the arching fence. 
So once again, just showing options. It works great on the right side of the card. It works great on the left side of the card. So I finished the decoration of that card as a Halloween card. And this is a good card to show how our dies are always backwards compatible because I used one of our previously released dies, our landscape scene for the spooky tree and the moon. For the other elements on this card, I used our new Happy Halloween that does come with a shadow and then also our haunted tiny house add-ons. That's where the webs and the spiders and the bats came from. So you will definitely get year round use out of that fence. Let's look at a couple cards by our very talented design team. For this bright and beautiful iron fence card, Karen Aiken used our backyard charms on the fence, and I like how she attached the snail to the right fence post so that it slides as the card opens. We have some other Halloween dies in our previously released collections that work well with the iron fence, and Frances Byrne is showing that here with our Halloween scene and Halloween elements die sets. This card by Lois shows that idea I was talking about earlier about just having bare trees from those long nature edges too. Then she's also used the Halloween elements. Here's a lovely Christmas card by Lois Bach and I like her choice to combine the iron fence with the new street lantern. For this parcel pop-up card by Frances Byrne, she's using the iron fence just as a decorator die. And then this is a fabulous gatefold card by Lois Bach where she's used arching fences on both of the folds. And I love the whole scene that Fran has created in this card where the birds are decorating the fence using the swag that comes included in the street lantern. The Iron Fence pop-up die set is available now from a lot of your favorite local and online retailers as well as from our website karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.